Welcome to Electrified, it's your host Dylan Loomis. So first up today, although the catalyst for Elon's decision is unfortunate, some of you will be very pleased with this outcome. Elon said, I will try my best to be heads down, focus on doing useful things for civilization due to the supernova level of attention that's been focused on him recently. Remember what they say. With great power comes great responsibility. A note from yesterday's video when I shared some of the data from that Autoline Network video, all of that data that you heard was for the United States market only. Thanks, Christopher. Speaking of EV sales data, Kelly Blue Book just put out this report for electric light vehicle sales quarter two this year. Starting with the top half of the list, we're just going to focus on the year to date sales. That includes quarter one and quarter two. And just note the segment share this year to date column on the far right. This is the percent market share for just the EV market, not the overall auto market for each individual car listed on the left. On this segment of the list, we only have three vehicles with over a 3% EV market share, those being the Kia EV6 at 3.4, the Hyundai Ioniq 5 at 3.7, and the Ford Mach-E at 4.8%. Now unveiling the bottom half of the list, the only other four vehicles above a 3% market share is the sexy Tesla lineup. Doing the math for these four Tesla vehicles, Tesla has a 70.1% market share of the EV space for the first half of 2022. These are just estimates, but I thought this was a pretty good overview of the entire passenger light EV space for the first half of this year. For what it's worth, there were 34 total EVs to choose from. Tesla has applied for a Cyber Roundup trademark application, so it seems like Tesla annual shareholder meetings are a thing of the past, being replaced by Cyber Roundups. Although on Tesla's official page, it's still the annual meeting of stockholders. Remember, it's only one week from this Thursday. The big topic is the three for one stock split that is to be voted on, should pass with flying colors. Maybe Tesla wants to make some new merch with this new Cyber Roundup name and logo trademark. Some people are speculating that this means a big announcement for Cybertruck. I'm not one of them. This is a pretty big story as Government Motors has been revived for part two. The Department of Energy intends to loan both GM and LG Energy Solutions $2.5 billion to make batteries at least they're doing it here in America. No Mexico jobs here as this is for battery production in Ohio, Tennessee, and Michigan. This is from that same ATVM program, the Advanced Technology Vehicles Manufacturing, that actually loaned Tesla money back in 2010. This is the first loan under this program umbrella that will be strictly for battery manufacturing. Altium LLC, the umbrella making GM's Altium sales, said facilities will create more than 5,000 new high-tech jobs in the US. Production at the Ohio plant expected to start in August. Production in Tennessee is set for late 2023 and Michigan in 2024. The Department of Energy has already received requests for more than $18 billion of loans. These are supposed to be loans, not just handouts, from the auto program and expects at least another $5 billion in requests that are actively being prepared. The program currently has $17.7 .7 billion in lending authority available. So this is a loan that's intended to be paid back and a lot of people give GM a hard time for the bailout in which the federal government lost about $10 billion. The fact is GM actually satisfied all of its obligations for the part of that deal that was a loan that was to be paid back. Basically what happened was the shares in this new restructured GM that the federal government owned, they never rose in value enough to make up some of that deficit. So ultimately in 2013, when the federal government sold the remaining shares of GM, it was still in the whole about $10 billion overall from the roughly $50 billion bailout that GM received. The argument really should be that GM should have been forced to use some of the cash on its balance sheet to actually pay back the taxpayer, whether it be via profits or something else because of the ultimate shortfall that the government experienced and that money of course came from the taxpayer. Can you imagine the FUD if Tesla got a two and a half billion dollar loan from the government now? People are still making a huge deal about Tesla getting 465 million dollars in 2010 that they paid back nine years early. All of the headlines would be Tesla would be dead without government bailouts. Elon's a government grifter. Now, do I think Tesla would allocate this capital more efficiently? Absolutely, I don't even think it's a question, but at least we're getting some more batteries made in America and hopefully GM can pay back this loan, but 
maybe I'm being too optimistic. I won't spend much time here as I think most of us already know this and believe this, but for friends or family members that are still skeptical, this would be a good research report to possibly share with them. It's from the Union of Concerned Scientists and the main finding over its lifetime from manufacturing to operation and disposal, the average new battery electric vehicle produces more than 50% less global warming pollution than a comparable gasoline or diesel vehicle. The link will be included below. There's both a full report and an executive summary. I'd recommend sharing the executive summary with people new to EVs. We got a new note from Morgan Stanley on Tesla stock. I just wanna highlight what I see as flawed reasoning. Adam Jonas said Tesla will exit fiscal year 2022 at nearly a 2 million annualized run rate. Scroll down a touch to unit volume estimates and for fiscal year 2023, their estimate is 1.98 million units. So Jonas just says Tesla will be able to produce a run rate of 2 million at the end of this year but then we'll only deliver 1.98 million at the end of 2023, basically expecting zero growth for the entirety of 2023. I think this is even worse. So Tesla's automotive gross margin X regulatory credits in quarter one, a more normal quarter than quarter two, was 30%. With that number in mind, Jonas is saying that for 2023, Tesla's auto gross margins X credits are only going to be 23.8%. His main reasoning is higher input costs, and he does say it's probably too conservative. However, this totally disregards the operating leverage once Austin and Berlin are actually ramped. Honestly, I think in 2023, Tesla's auto gross margins X credits will be over 30% considering they just did it in quarter one of this year. Apparently the trend for 2022 is for environmental groups to attack and try to slow down the one company doing the most for the environment. This is a letter just written to Tesla asking Tesla to terminate their planned investment in Indonesia's nickel industry due to potentially devastating impacts on the environment and the lives of Indonesian people. Their main arguments, environmental damage and deforestation. They then said this would criminalize local communities and as an example, they said three local people protested and were basically suppressed. They cite severe consequences for women because in this patriarchal society, they're the ones that have to come into contact with the natural resources, the soil and the water that would reportedly be harmed by this nickel industry. Signed by these organizations and some others. Look, you can always plant more trees, you can set up protocols to protect the water. This really seems like another case of missing the forest for the trees. There's this huge overarching climate problem that we need to solve and people seem to be focusing on these little specific instances. I'm not at all saying these complaints aren't valid, I'm just saying when you weigh the scales, most decisions in life are trade-offs. All of these other organizations as well that signed off on this letter apparently also do not understand the importance of Tesla's mission. Ultimately though, I think this will be a very positive thing if Tesla ends up working with Indonesia. This push from these groups will make sure that Tesla is aware of the concerns so that they can do the best they can to protect the environment. All the while getting the resources Tesla needs to push us to sustainable energy. Chuck Cook shared some drone videos of the Tesla ADAS team actually testing his left turn. Now, as you can see, using the median to wait to make the final part of the turn. In this one, it actually yielded to the other car that was in the median that had the right of way, so that's good. In the last clip, Chuck said that at this point, it would usually wait for all three lanes to be clear. Now, this time it actually pulled into the left near lane while that semi truck was coming in the middle. This is definitely a risky move because those cars can change lanes at any time, but sometimes you have to do what you have to do. From Drive Tesla Canada or DTC, it looks like Tesla insurance is set to come to Georgia November 15th of this year and it will be with the real-time telematics. And yes, Tesla will be underwriting this insurance. The program will be distributed through the digital InsureTech platform from Tesla Insurance Services. I went ahead and updated the Tesla insurance map. We currently have nine states in the different shades of green and the blue where Tesla insurance is active and four states now including Georgia where it's upcoming hopefully soon. If it's somehow not clear by the key over here, all of the gray states, there is currently no Tesla insurance available. 
Genuine impact on Substack actually made this Tesla flow chart for its Q2 financials. Won't spend much time here. I just wanted to show it to you. I think these are really cool, especially for visual learners. And it's good to maybe take five minutes and take a look. So go ahead and pause the screen or take a screenshot. And just so you can see the bottom part where these cost of revenues are actually split up. For anyone that may be new to financial statements or income statements, I think these flowcharts are an awesome way to better understand those documents. So it could be worth taking the time to kind of get these flows down. So when you read Tesla's actual reports, they'll make a lot more sense. You guys know as of late, I voiced my disagreement with Gary Black on a few different topics. However, today we're fully in agreement. He said Tesla's free cash flow story is so underrated and the looming investment grade credit rating upgrade will change the whole narrative around Tesla to blue chip growth stock from momentum stock. Not only that, but certain hedge funds and pension funds can actually only invest in investment grade companies. So this will be a pretty big deal for Tesla. Tesla stock maybe over the next few weeks. The latest update on Giga Shanghai is that all of the upgrades for both Model 3 and Model Y are set to be done on August 7th. Gasku reporting that the Model Y upgrades were done on July 16th and then the Model 3 upgrades kicked off the following day on July 17th. Multiple sources confirming the second phase production lines for the Model Y are already back to work in some capacity. Reports vary, but for both Model 3 and Model Y, pre-upgrade they were doing around 2,500 units per day. After the upgrades, it's set to go up to around 3,500 units per day. This was randomly awesome as Ogden on Twitter shared this video of the Tesla dash cam capturing a meteor on camera, which is a nice change of pace from the typical road rage or terrible drivers that dash cam usually gets. It looks like Germany is set to roll back EV subsidies starting next year. The weird part is that these won't expire on a certain date. It's only going to be when this certain money allocation of $2.53 billion is actually spent or expired. For this article, remember right now, the US dollar to the Euro is essentially one to one. So Euros is the same as dollars. Premiums or incentives for pure BEVs priced below $40,000 will fall from $6,000 to $4,500 starting at the beginning of next year and to $3,000 over the course of 2023. There's no subsidy for people buying EVs over $65,000. Subsidies for company cars or fleets will fall away. And the government will also axe incentives for plug-in hybrid cars at the end of this year entirely. As you would expect, not everybody is happy with this decision. From investing.com, Tesla has a recall for a small amount of Model Ys due to the front bumper carrier structure that may cause the passenger airbag to deploy incorrectly. This is one of the first recalls for Tesla that cannot be updated OTA. This will require a service appointment. VW has officially started production of the ID4 here in the States in Chattanooga, Tennessee. They're expecting production capacity of 7,000 cars per month in quarter four of this this year, further increases next year, and first vehicles set to be delivered as early as October this year. This is a milestone of sorts as it is VW's first electric vehicle manufactured in the United States. The first production variant will have an 82 kilowatt hour battery and later this year, they'll come out with a 62 kilowatt hour version. It looks like just yesterday, SpaceX filed a new application with the FCC. This is a request to use the two gigahertz band to operate a mobile satellite service, which will involve augmenting Starlink satellites. Yes, this is different from the Starlink Maritime and the Starlink for RVs. This, if I'm reading it correctly, is actually for mobile users, specifically in remote locations. This new service would use Starlink satellites to beam the communication data to users on the ground instead of relying on traditional cellular base stations. SpaceX says it can do this after it acquired Swarm, a California startup behind nano satellites capable of supplying internet connectivity to the Internet of Things devices in rural regions. Internet of Things is basically just the communication network of all devices. The company's plan is to add a modular payload on Starlink satellites capable of using the two gigahertz radio band to power the mobile satellite service. The company is hinting it will involve selling a portable device that can connect to the network. Clearly, right now, some of the logistical details are a bit unclear. However, it looks like SpaceX is looking to use that two gigahertz band. In the description, they actually talked about how Dish Network kind of has access to 
that spectrum, but they're not doing anything with it. So they basically said, hey, like give us access to this. We can use it much better than Dish is. And Dish's contracts are expiring soon anyway. Simply put, my interpretation of this new service could be just for basic communications and data access, not like some 5G new network with unlimited data. So in areas where there's no cellular connection or internet service, people could still actually make phone calls, send a text, or use a limited amount of data. Back in 2012, DISH actually bought that two gigahertz spectrum for MSS or mobile satellite service and have basically just been sitting on it, not actually providing any service since. In response to all of the short seller FUD, Sawyer said the best thing you can do honestly is to keep killing it at Tesla, to which Elon said, good point, will do. GM reported earnings and missed for quarter two. However, they said that they were unable to ship 100,000 vehicles by the end of the quarter due to parts shortages. Go ahead and pause the screen if you wanna check out the numbers. What I really want to highlight is that GM said it expects net income of between 9.6 and $11.2 billion for the full year 2022. So let's call it in the neighborhood of 10 billion. For Tesla, through the first two quarters of this year, Tesla has already done over $5.5 billion in gap net income. So Tesla could easily have more net income than GM this year while producing a fraction of the vehicles. Forward Cap added, despite selling 82% fewer vehicles than GM in quarter two, Tesla generated 36% more net income. Here's the table he shared, Tesla's vehicle deliveries significantly less than GM in the quarter, going down to gap net income 36% higher. This is before GM has really spent the money to transition to EVs. GM did say, however, that they have binding agreements securing all battery raw material, supporting their goal of 1 million units of annual EV capacity in North America in 2025. So it's good, but is this catching Tesla good? Not even going to read this one, but are any of you actually surprised? Last up for today, this tweet from Tesla. We did talk about this last week, Tesla's new shareholder platform, where you can vote and do certain things by connecting your brokerage to verify you're a shareholder. So there are some more features to come, but we did cover this last week. If you missed it, I'll include a link below. That'll do it for today. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.